even on mere inspection, an abnormal head size will draw attention. Here too, as mentioned earlier, the head circumference must be measured and entered into the percentile curve. Apart from head size, the head shape must also be observed. The elongated shape of this child's head is the result of premature closure of the sagittal suture. This is known as scaphocephaly. Even if the skull shows no obvious abnormalities, the sutures and the fontanelle must be palpated. In young babies, the sutures are particularly easy to palpate. The level and tension of the fontanelle must be palpated in an upright position. The child should not cry during the procedure. The anterior fontanelle is measured diagonally from front right to back left. The anterior fontanelle closes between the 12th and the 18th month. Nasal patency is observed. If a child's nasal breathing is difficult, we must consider the presence of foreign bodies, quite apart from anatomical abnormalities. Especially a one-sided or bloody secretion is a sign of the presence of a foreign body. Chronic rhinitis often extends to the paranasal sinuses. Of the paranasal sinuses, only the ethmoidal cells are developed from the time of birth. An inflammation of the ethmoidal cells shows in swollen eyelids. Ethmoiditis is a dangerous illness. The other paranasal sinuses are only pneumatized later as the child grows. This is why infections in the maxillary sinuses become increasingly frequent only from the fourth year. Frontal and sphenoid sinusitis is not normally found until the child is of school age. In a normal examination designed to show the child's health status, the eyes undergo only simple tests. It is important to look for a strabismus early on. To do so, Try to interest the child in the light of a small lamp. The light source should come from the observer's direction. It is best if the examiner can have the light source on his forehead. Once the child fixes his eyes on the light, watch whether there is a symmetric image of the reflections on the cornea. One eye may now be covered at a time, while the other eye is being observed. If this uncovered eye makes a movement designed to adjust, this indicates a strabismus. It is important to cover the eye as close to the child as possible without actually touching the child. In this child, the asymmetrical position of the corneal reflex indicates strabismus. By covering one eye, it is possible to see how the uncovered eye makes an adjustment. This test enables the recognition of a small deviation. A motility test also helps to distinguish between concomitant and paralytic strabismus. In concomitant strabismus, the deviation remains the same in all directions. In paralytic strabismus, there is a deviation only in the direction of the affected muscle. Here, for example, the left rectus lateralis muscle. Since a baby's binocular vision is fully developed at the age of six months, any strabismus must be clarified by six months at the latest. This also means excluding other factors which can cause the axis of the eyeball to deviate. This child's left pupil appears yellow. He suffers from a retinoblastoma, a retinal tumor. The sclerae are normally white and smooth. If the sclerae are thin, they appear blue. Osteogenesis imperfecta results in blue sclerae. In jaundice too, the sclerae are affected. Like the skin, the sclerae turn yellowish. 
On irritation, the conjunctivi usually react unspecifically with greater vascular injection. This gives the impression of red eyes. The examination of the ears starts by looking at the external ear. We take note of the shape of the ear and of its location in relation to the eyes, and of its environment, especially the mastoid process. Swelling of the mastoid process as a result of mastoiditis typically causes the ears to stand out. This is clearly the case with the left ear. Deformed ears are often combined with chromosome abnormalities. Here is a folded ear in trisomy 21 syndrome. Pressure on the tragus is mostly painful in otitis externa. This is called tragus tenderness. <coughs> the auditory canal and the tympanic membrane are inspected with the otoscope. The mother is asked to hold the child. This is not a popular examination and should therefore be carried out towards the end. The otoscope may be introduced only while checking visually, especially because the auditory canal is short in children. The hand which guides the otoscope must be propped against the child's head. If the child's head is well fixed, the examination may also be carried out in a lying position. This normal tympanic membrane of the left ear clearly shows the manubrium malae and the light reflex. They form an angle which is open towards the face. The tympanic membrane is intact, smooth and shiny. With otitis media, the light reflex is not present. Behind the strongly domed and vascularly injected tympanic membrane, some pus may be expected. The lips can easily be examined externally. This baby has a cleft lip and palate on the right side. Once the lips have been examined, the mouth and trachea are inspected. Within a short time, the teeth, gums, mucosa, tonsils and pharynx must be inspected. The teeth emerge in a specific order, according to age. The first to show are the lower incisors. Here is a diagram. The lower incisors appear roughly at the age of six months. The remaining milk teeth follow in a specific order. Roughly at the age of six, the lower incisors fall out, and the first permanent teeth to show are the first molars. The second molars usually appear at the age of 12. A relatively frequent problem in young children are the so-called dummy caries, caused by frequent feeding with bottles whose contents have been sweetened with sugar. Even milk teeth with caries must be treated. Healthy milk teeth are important for nutrition, for the development of the jaw and face, as well as for keeping a space for the permanent teeth. Normally tonsils are visible only if the patient says, ah, with his mouth open and by pressing down on the tongue with a spatula. This causes a gag reflex. The size of the tonsils vary a great deal from one individual to another. The tonsils in children are physiologically hypertrophic. This hypertrophy is reduced by the age of puberty. This child suffers from tonsillitis. His tonsils are covered with white exudate. Canals for mucus and pus on the posterior pharyngeal wall should also be watched out for. In some cases, the adenoids can also be seen. On the neck, the thyroid gland and the location of the trachea are examined. The trachea is located on the median line. When the thyroid gland is inspected, the child must bend his head back. The thyroid gland is palpated from the back. 
A normal thyroid gland can neither be seen nor palpated. If there are any doubts, the child is given a drink. During swallowing, it is easier to demarcate the thyroid gland against other structures. In this girl, the enlarged thyroid gland is striking even at first glance. Cysts or fistulae may be visible in the cervical region, as in this example of a lateral cervical fistula.